Today we've got some very important science to crack. How to make a root beer float without waiting too long for the foam to settle. We've got something very important to figure out today. I'm very excited. It's very important. It's, this is, this, this is, is science. Like of all the science being done in the world, this is like- Peak science. At the most important for me. It's root beer floats. For those of you who are not in America and don't know what root beer floats are, you might have Coke floats, which is Coke with ice cream in it. Well, that's supposed to be with root beer and it's way better. And if you don't like root beer, I'm sorry, but you're wrong and we can't be friends. Here's the basic idea. We're going to try every version of a root beer float we can come up with to see what's the fastest. What makes it so you don't have to wait forever for the foam to settle before you add more soda? There is a very well-known problem with root beer floats. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is, Root beer is very foamy. Root beer is very foamy, and generally that's a good attribute. I actually kind of prefer less foamy types of root beer, mm -hmm. but that's fine either okay. way. So we've got some ice cream in a cup, and we've got all of our soda over here in the sink full of ice and water with some salt in it to get it extra cold. Here we go. Demonstrating the problem as best I can, okay. I will now pour some root beer onto this vanilla ice cream in the cup. Cool. Well, it's not all in there yet. This is actually working out decently well. Okay. We can see that I've now got two scoops of ice cream and this entire can of root beer into our root beer float. And I believe one of the first things we wanted to test is the difference that temperature makes. So okay. this soda that's in our sink You've should be should be quite cold at this point. Yeah. Okay. All right, we've got two scoops. And let's see if it makes a difference with warmer root beer. I'm gonna go with yes. You've melted more of the ice cream as well. All right, so there's the whole can poured into this cup. This was just sitting in the box on the counter. Mm -hmm. It's not overly warm, but it's not chilled. It's room um, temperature. Yeah, so I think we, I basically just want to do this again. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can take a chilled can and I will take a warm can, but instead of pouring it all in like that, I'm just going to wait for the bubbles to go down and see how long it takes for me to get the entire can oh, of not cooled root beer into the cup. I've got a stopwatch open on my phone. Okay. I'm gonna see how long it takes me to get this entire can in there. Getting really close to the top, so I just gotta let it wait until I can fit more in. I think it's because it's melting the ice cream and the ice cream bubbles just don't dissipate the same. That might be it. All right, that was like 29 seconds. Okay. And we spent a couple seconds comparing without actually uh -huh. pouring, so it was probably more like 24, 25 seconds, something like that. Okay. 25 seconds, you got the whole you can, can start pouring again. and two scoops of ice cream. You're right, I can add more. Uh, nope, gotta wait again. And I okay. do want to address, this is an important discussion point. Mm -hmm. Some people like this. Mm -hmm. They want to just get the foam and eat the foam off of the spoon yeah. or just drinking it. That's great. Vanilla you do you. Now you'll know Houston. if you want more foam, apparently using warm root beer is gonna get you way more than the cold root beer. But I'll see if I can like pour root beer down. There yep, so collapsing some of it. Oh, but I'm still, oh, it's so much. Can I get it all? Don't collapse, don't collapse, don't collapse. There's still like a little bit in here. Okay, there you go. All right, so technically I now have it all in the cup. That took a minute 53 compared to your like 24 seconds over there. The warmer root beer melted a lot of the ice cream, whereas the cold root beer, it's still just root beer with ice cream in it. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of ice cream Oh, you were left. right. As is soon as I started starting? mixing. Yeah, is it oh, gonna no. overflow? Oh no. And I gotta say, even though this has melted all the frozen ice cream into it, it's still not that cold. We are clocking in at 56 Fahrenheit. So it's not like warm, warm, but it's like not exactly cold. And on this one, oh, we are dropping down. We're actually at 31.9, 32. We're at like at freezing temperature. So way colder, 25 yeah. degrees colder with the chilled cans. So we're seeing great results with chilling. Mm -hmm. So next, Along that same line with the uh, the refrigeration is yep. making a difference, we have a glass cup and a frozen glass cup. So here's two very refrigerated root beers. Actually, I'm curious. I wanna see what temperature just the root beer itself is at. Yeah, we are below freezing on these cans, so that's impressive. Just pouring straight down onto the top. Okay. And I've got a frozen cup. Okay, I think these actually might just hold less than, oh. More foam. Yep, your frozen cup is definitely holding that foam in better. Also, I think my frozen cup is holding the ice cream. Down at the bottom. Down at the bottom, and so it's not getting quite as much surface contact. Is yours already all poured? I, I got the whole can poured at this point, I've yeah. still got quite a bit, 30% or so. The thermal energy in one of these glass cups, when it's cold, it keeps everything cold, but when it's warm, like the plastic cup, it's not frozen, but it has so little mass to it that 
heat's not really being yeah. transferred. I think this is warming up. So your cup, we're looking at 35-ish, which is definitely not warm, 37. <laughs> and then my cup dropped below 31. We're at 30.6, so we're several degrees colder in mine, definitely. We can get the Barks root beer, but this time we're going to put the root beer in first and then see how long it takes to get in our two scoops of ice cream. At this temperature, very cold, it's slightly below freezing, about 30 degrees, uh, it works just fine. You can put the ice cream right in. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the same result in that the ice cream doesn't really mix in kind of at all. So now we've got warmer root beer and I'm afraid we're just gonna have this overflow onto the counter, but let's see. scoop one. Quite a bit of foam, but it's not going over yet. Uh-oh, spoke too soon. Well, it's about to. All right, oh, okay, okay. Is it, it's, it's definitely over the edge. Is it about to spill? I think it's about to spill. There's definitely yep, yep. a difference. Yep, it's now dripping in the front. You're definitely gonna see what looks more like your classic root beer float if you use the warm soda. Mm. But for me, I like the chilled version now that I know. Now earlier, you asked if we were just doing a straight pour, mm -hmm. implying the possibility of a difference if you use a not straight pour. That is true. So there is a way uh, to avoid getting so much foam on the top of your drink. It's simple bartending pour. You hold your drink at an angle and you hold the soda at an angle. So instead of the soda hitting the bottom of the cup, it hits the side and then goes down. There's less foam that is caused by this. I am very quickly approaching the top of my cup, but I've put more root beer into my cup, so. Okay, I've about hit the limit for now. I have to wait. Looks like you're coming up on a limit. Yep, there's my limit. There, I think, I, I I think, think you actually got more. Well, it's still, it's still a race to get the whole can in. Yep, I can't pour sideways anymore, so. It's true. So the sideways pour is of limited time opportunity. Oh, you are about to overflow no! there. No, got it. Oh, did you beat me? Did. All right, you beat me, but only by like <laughs> a couple seconds I yeah. maybe could have kept up. So the side pour with a root beer float, mm. I don't think it works. And I think it's because what's causing most of the foaming isn't the contact with the glass, it's, it's the, the contact with the ice cream. This time. Yeah. What's our next test? Because you have some ingredients on this counter that are frankly Odd. Uh, concerning. So I've always been taught that with root beer, you can touch the foam and it helps the bubbles go away. It does go away. It didn't make a was, lot but... of difference, but the bubbles did seem to disperse from where my finger was. And what mm. I've always heard is that the reason for that is the oils on your skin. They actually will break down a little bit of the surface tension or just make it react with it faster so that it doesn't form as much of a foam. Well, I've got some oil here and I want to see if it makes any difference. I got a tiny bit on my fingertip and now I'm just going to draw if, a line yeah, up the up side of the, the cup. Side. And now I'm just going to side by side pour in with and without oil and see if it makes any difference. Maybe a small difference? No, not really. So you can actually see right there, that's the streak of oil. Yeah. There's like larger bubbles in sort of a line up the side. Interesting. But it doesn't seem to be affecting the rest of the cup much for the most part. Mm. You can definitely see where it was, but I don't think so. It's really not making much difference. Nothing really changed. Got about the same amount in and the same amount of time and the foam is at the same spot on the top. Please, for all that's good in the world, don't put oil in your root beer. Does not seem to help. Don't do it. This um, one makes a little bit more sense. Sugar. If you pour sugar into soda, it often just foams all at once. It's true. This time, we're going to put some sugar at the bottom first. Just get all the carbonation out quickly and then add the ice cream and see if it doesn't react anymore because all the carbonation already escaped from the sugar. All right, there's the entire warm can poured in. Now before when we added two scoops into warm soda, it overflowed. It's a lot of foam. Is it going to go over the cup? It's still growing. Yeah, it but still not, might. not by much. I'm not calling it yet. I think maybe just the tiniest bit less, but sugar as an additive didn't really change anything either. Not too much. All right, what's with this one? So my thought was like with the sugar is you could have the root beer poured in, add a little bit of half and half to the cup and see if it prevents it from foaming when we add the ice cream. I'm having a hard time. I can't get the whole can in because we have milky bubbles that hold themselves together a lot better. Uh, yeah, so this would be a negative. And then I can still add some ice cream and see if it foams up more or if we did in fact temper it against the ice creaminess. Nope. Until that second nope. scoop for some reason. Nope. <laughs> that was the killer second scoop. <laughs> Why? It pushed it underneath the creamy bubbles. It must be. Yep, and it's doing that same slow descent and just mm. adding more and more foam. Quick, save it. I had high hopes for that one, but it just did nothing. I have one more 
fairly odd thing to test. You know, bubbles are caused because of surface tension in the liquid. Mm -hmm. Some things add to the surface tension, some take away. A surfactant is something that will take away from the surface tension. Many surfactants are not good for eating, but there is one called lecithin. You can buy lecithin in these little tablets and it's made from sunflowers. Okay. And so I'm going to see if I can put any of this lecithin on the inside of the cup and have it mix into the root beer and make it so that it doesn't hold bubbles as well. Oh my, this will be so this interesting. This is probably not the best way to do this even, just extracting it from these tablets because they have other stuff in them like some oil and stuff. And it's also this very thick oh, gel. Oh no! Yeah. Now, for those of you who are concerned about what this would do, it, yeah. it tastes like sunflower seeds. Okay, and, okay. And it's more concerning to see than to actually taste. Off-brand granola or something. Yeah. So I'm actually just gonna smear yep. some of this. Up to... around the top too. Yeah. Now, it doesn't look like much of that has mixed in. It's kind of just there on the sides, but we'll try adding some ice cream anyway and see if that helped at all. Second scoop, that's the danger zone. And it's not even a full root beer in there. That's a little bit less than a whole can's worth. And same descent, same foam. So I'm very willing to accept that maybe the lecithin did not really get mixed in very well. I think if it had, it would just let go of all of its carbonation kind That's of at true. first. For you international people, we do have some Coca-Cola and we're going to try the same thing, warm versus cold with that, see if it works with Coke as well. And then just a few other brands of root beer to see if it's kind of consistent or if it changes a lot. If you live in a different country and you like root beer, will you let me know in the comments? I'm so curious now. We've got Coca-Cola, she's got cold. You clearly have more liquid in yours already. And larger bubbles, which uh -huh. I suspect will pop much faster than my yeah. tightly compacted foam. Done. That's, that's how much I haven't even been able to fit in. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Huge difference with the temperature. Oh, it makes all the difference I've in the world. I've never had a Coca-Cola float. Now that we know, I gotta know. Okay. Okay, everyone else, I see what you're getting at. This is just a test with two other brands of root beer, both in glass bottles, to see if them being really cold also works still, or if it's just something about a and w. Can we get our whole bottle in, just pouring right on, ooh, foamy brands. Oh, this you're... is also good for if you do. Oh, you actually do have your whole thing. So yeah. my IBC, it's it does not want to let me. Look and these that. were both chilled. So, so this brand is also, makes a difference. It does. If you like the foam, you want more foam. We're showing you how to get the most foam and how to get the least foam. Virgils. Virgils, mm -hmm. much less foamy than IBC. So there you go. A few different ways to pour your root beer. If you want more foam, less foam, more chilled, less chilled, melty ice cream, solid ice cream. We tried adding stuff to it. None of them really made a difference. Exactly. Sugar, oil, less than pills, half and half. None of those really changed anything. Temperature by far made the biggest difference. Also, if you've got a well chilled glass or a thin cup that doesn't have much thermal mass and you've got very chilled soda, you can have that whole thing ready to go in like less than 30 seconds. Guys, I feel like we've fairly exhaustively tested this, but there might be some other ideas that you guys have that we didn't. If there's any of those you want to see, please let us know down in the comments. I am not opposed to making another video about root beer floats. And Coke, obviously, it's different. That's not a twist top! <laughs> That's it for today, but we've always got more cool stuff coming out to see. Hit the button right there to subscribe so you don't miss one, and we'll see you in the next video. Talk to you then.